This is the last of four days of the drop-in consultation that we've organised, the theme being around towards a shared vision for a community hub within Glen Barr. Um, the exhibition has been divided up into a number of sections, and so what I'm going to do basically is talk you through each of these five areas a little bit um, and explore some of the thoughts and ideas so far and then let you look at the boards and give us feedback because we're wanting to hear from you what you see as the priorities for moving forward. The reason we're doing this now is because we've actually spent the summer talking to all the landowners and businesses in the, in the core part of the village. There's been two working groups doing research and exploring potential things to do. And we now feel we're in a position where nothing's guaranteed, but the, the confidence that we're getting back from the landowners about the general theme that we have in mind and the general structure of doing things is positive. And therefore, we can now immediately have a conversation about what the community would actually like to do in these spaces. It doesn't matter that you can't see all the words on this because there's a board at the back that you can and we will also be posting it um, online for people to look at. The critical thing here is that we are looking at the term community hub as meaning both a building and a potential space for the community to gather. So in other words, indoor and outdoor. To the village, um, basically, we're looking at um, Major's Field here, a potential site for a new facility for the community, a building of some sort providing the facilities that you tell us you would like to have and exploring the potential for it. We've had discussions with the landowners and there's an, a mean, you know, they're amenable to continuing the conversation. What we need to do is start thinking about what that might be like and go forward from there. And your ideas through this consultation process will feed into that and I'll say a bit more about it uh, later. The other purple is where we are now because Whatever we do in the long term is not going to happen immediately. It's at least five years away. And we still want to get together as a community and do lots of things. So what are the short term opportunities for improving the facility we have that we're in at the moment, um, given the restriction that there's no land beyond it that we can do anything in, but we have got the ability to make it perhaps a little bit more pleasant to be in and more flexible for use. So ideas for that would be welcome. Um, the, the other area we're looking at is the field, I can't remember what the Gaelic name for the field is, but it's the one <laughs> across the bridge on the right-hand side where you have, I believe you've had fireworks and bonfires and things like that in the past. Um, this would be an ideal place for a village green, and we're in negotiations with the landowner to get this as a community space which the community would manage and own and do what the community wanted to do on it. The green area to the left and right is basically an area of woodland, which we're seeing is linked to the other facilities, but something which can be used by visitors and, and uh, residents alike. And we're in discussions with the owners of those areas about whether it's a case of getting um, permission to do works on their land or whether they might be interested in discussing with us leases or purchase for the community, all of which needs to be looked at, but in principle um, is there to be explored. The two yellow areas, one is the, obviously the Glenbar stores. We've been in discussion with them. They have ambitions to be a social hub. They're a commercial enterprise. But as you know, we've got the brew and blether happening there. It's building up and building momentum. There's other things that we can do with them as a private business. And it's to make sure that we work in partnership and do the best we can together. The other area that's in yellow is the laundry building. Um, and again, that would be a private enterprise. But the question is, if it was to be uh, restored in some way, what might the connection be with the community um, to take that forward? We're not suggesting investment of the association in that, but again, it's talking to the partners so that we can link up and maximize the benefit of all our assets uh, together. So let me go on to talk about community hub in the terms of a building facility. We have looked at, and you can spend some time later, looking, we've got two boards at the back, where we've basically done an analysis of 38 community hubs in the west of Scotland. They cost mostly in the range of between one and two and a half million from start to finish. Um, and they have 
between them about 20 different facilities they've used. So we've analysed that and we've recorded it there for you to look at. The critical thing is that the three main components um, are catering facilities, meeting rooms and event space. And you'll see there's a few examples at the back there of the charging that these communities have for these spaces because they use those to generate an income to help run the facility once the capital works is finished. So it's a, it's, it's a concept of providing community facilities but having to design them in such a way that you can get an income stream to help pay for the running costs. That's the basic principle. Um, some of these things already. Another interesting thing is the funding because I must stress that the idea is that you've got a tremendous once in a lifetime opportunity to use wind turbine funding to generate more money from elsewhere for your projects. So that's the challenge. We're not saying save it up for years and then spend it all in one thing. What we're saying is keep a component of it and use it to facilitate a greater facility. So if that's what the community would like to do, then the opportunity is there. And most of those examples you'll find they went to at least three other sources of funding to actually get the grants um, for that process. They also take five to 10 years to deliver. Some of them um, do a bit of self-service as well as have management. But the key thing is that it's likely that you're going to need some manpower to manage the process later and you need to think about that in terms of the potential revenue stream from anything that you want to design. I've just got a few examples here. This is a very basic shop with table and chairs outside. Um, it's not something you're likely to need here because you've got that facility already next door. Um, but many people will take a building and convert it and adapt it. This is the Three Villages Hall in Arica, which I know from talking to people in the village, quite a few of you have visited in the past. So that's why I've used that. Um, that works very successfully. It's, it's a bit of a sort of urban design in a way. Um, but again, they rent out the spaces, the hall they charge, I think it's £1,200 for a wedding. Um, so it's the same model. And I've got a map at the back, a, a plan at the back there, for those of you that haven't seen it already, of the kind of layout. Again, we're not saying that's a layout for here but rather just giving you examples of what others have done. Um, this is on the island of Col, um, and I partly selected this because if it was to be something in Major's field, then because of the slope and the views and the orientation, something that had great windows, great views, the ability to spill outdoors um, would, would work quite well there. But it's just a concept. We're not, you know, this, this is what they have in Col. Nice big modern space inside for all sorts of different uses. Um, run by the community. It's also to benefit lots of visitors. The population of Col, uh, last time I looked, was about 195 permanent residents. So the scale is not that much different from here. But obviously, it's an island, and that brings in island factors, which are different. But usually, things cost a lot more on an island because of the shipping of, of materials and getting contractors and everything else. So it's a model that we think might be relevant, but it's up to you to let us know whether you think it might be worth going and organizing a visit. This is Iona Community Hub. Again, it's just an example of the kind of layout that typically is looked at in terms of a main hall with meeting spaces off it and a gathering space, but always designed to be appropriate for the particular um, site that you have selected. I want to talk about the short term because whatever the ambition for a new facility, it's going to take a long time to get there. And we've all got lots to do in the meantime. So this hall, we know is limited in terms of its uh, lifespan and also in terms of the fact that it has no land beyond it. So it's difficult to think about an extension or a, or a place to sit outside. The parking's difficult, all those things. But at the same time, it has a historic place in the village. It's here. It could be used more, and perhaps we need to look at how we can help enhance it in the short term to get some, some use. Um, it's good to see that you're here from the stores because I wasn't going to miss you out. Um, we, have, we have got a new facility, I think it's locally now called the Greenhouse. Um, and you know we're, we're being offered 
reduced rates as a community of £30 an hour for that. I know that it's part of the core business and won't always be available, but again, it's understanding each other, seeing what it could be used practically for, and seeing how we can work together um, to take various community projects forward. So where are we now with the, with the Development Association role in this? One is we want to start through the feedback we get from this consultation, through ongoing conversations with you and the landowners, to start to define more clearly what a facility might look like. When I say look like, I mean the types of facilities in it and home in so that we can identify two or three examples elsewhere that might be similar in scope where we can go and talk to people and have honest conversations about the constraints, the difficulties, the lessons learned, all those sorts of things, get inspiration. Um, and with the help of Laura, who's in the back left here in the check shirt, Laura comes from the Development Trust Association of Scotland. Her and I have been in conversations and there's the opportunity to get signposted to places where we can get support to help with organizing a trip for a small number of people from the community to actually go on a tour and look at some existing hubs before we start to define what would be uh, particularly useful in, in Glen Barr. Um, then beyond that, we'd be scoping in on, and it would be important to get the resources, to get consultants, to do our options analysis, and all the things that you have to do to define what would be the final uh, thick project you would want to go forward with. And it's well worthwhile doing a lot of homework up front because it saves you time and money later and then you'll get a facility that once you've got it, it will work as a business. Um, it won't be a commercial business, but it still has to run like a business because you have to keep running it um, afterwards, otherwise it's not worth doing it. Now, the second area which is related is the Munity Woodland. There's a huge passion in the village, I know, as an outsider coming in for the wood, and it's been neglected for a long time and we need to get it reinstated in some way. There's ash dye back, there's all sorts of issues. Um, Replanting, is new planting is probably required if you want to retain a woodland there in the long term. So there's a lot of thought to be going into it, but the good thing is that the owners of the woodlands are interested in working with us and exploring um, how we can legally um, make some improvements for the benefit of the community um, without going overboard. We also want to link the woodland areas down to the coast, bringing the caravan park up here, allowing more walks. A day like this, wouldn't it be wonderful to just set off and walk all the way to the beach with the dog or whatever? Um, this is the aspiration. It takes some time to get there, but we're interested in your thoughts about how to take that forward as well. In the short term, there's a few enhancements we can make. Um, we did get some costings for improving, for example, these steps down to the back of the abbey. Um, that's still potential to do, but we have to sort out insurance and we have to sort out a license agreement with the landowners in order that we have the rights to do works uh, on their property. And we're in the process of looking into that at the moment. Something we haven't discussed in any detail, but we've got a map at the back there with some suggested circular walk that could be brought back into use in the village, and that would require a new bridge because this one is unsafe. And again, it would be the question of um, how would that be resourced and would the landowners on both sides of the river be happy for that to happen? But it's an ambition to, to bring more um, suitable walking facilities into the village. Again, we've had early conversations with different contractors from Argyle about signage and just simple things to help people navigate um, the woodland areas and the village. And that can do two things. It can both be telling a heritage story and it can also be just about making it easier for people to orientate themselves. The Ducat's in the woodland, um, so I've got it here. It's a very interesting feature. I'm hearing all sorts of stories about what people used to do in their youth around this Ducat. Um, and Whoever owns it has the opportunity to restore it and get 80% grants to do that. The community doesn't own it. They could maybe own it, but at the moment it's the trust that own it. So we're in conversations with the trust about what, what their view is about it. They're, in, they're inspired, but they're not quite sure of the way forward. 
but it's, again, we're interested to hear how important you feel that is as part of the village heritage. The village green. Um, this is the field uh, over the bridge where I believe you have bonfires and various other community things. And the vision is for this to become a village green where it's an outdoor facility owned by the community, run by the community, and you organise all sorts of things over the year. And again, it would be looking for your ideas about what kinds of activities you would like to see happening there and how we could build that up over time. Parking has been mentioned as an issue in various things that I've seen in the last year, um, particularly to do with the street outside the shop, but also to do with you know visitors coming in, you know, camper vans and all that sort of thing. But I think more importantly for yourselves, if you have a village green, you will be taking stuff down there. There will be importance for somebody where you don't have to have your tires whizzing around when you take some materials down for an event or something. So this is this is um, at Kilmartin Glen and near Crinan. Uh, but it ba basically, we're just suggesting that perhaps a small area allocated for grasscrete for parking might be a useful thing for the village as a whole, um, as well as for site management. So what are the immediate challenges? Well, there are plenty of them, so we all need to work together to overcome some of these. Um, securing the land in the, any buildings is number one, because many of the things to do with the community hub, but also to do with other ideas that came through the community investment plan in 2018, you can't actually implement those ideas and projects until you have the land or buildings to put them in. And so that's why the focus is on trying to see where we can get traction first and going forward. So that's um, one of the main challenges that we're working on at this moment. The next challenge will be once we have some assets, some short-term management arrangements before the longer-term plans um, materialize. Um, and then, of course, to get through that whole process, we need to be, with Laura's help, getting some signposts to places and then applying for grants to allow us to move forward with the different projects. And those grant applications quite often require an awful lot of work, options analysis, business planning, designs, planning, the whole thing. Um, and that can be an expensive process. So when I talk about one to two and a half million for a hub, at least 10% of that is going to be the fees you have to pay specialists to help you make the case to get the money for the building in the first place. So we have to bear that in mind. That pump priming um, is an essential ingredient. Um, we also have a challenge that at the moment, the association's income is totally wind turbine gift aid, which is a fantastic once in a lifetime opportunity that you've got. Um, it doesn't come with certainty. As we know, you had quite a few years where there was no income, then there was some income, then we had a bumper year in March 2023. We don't expect that to be coming uh, the next year. So we have to think carefully about how we manage things and our commitments. But with grant aid and other money coming through, we can develop a plan and you know, shrewd financial management um, is the key thing. And the higher interest rates, while they're disadvantaged in some ways, are actually quite helpful for us at the moment. Um, human resources. You have a fantastic board putting an awful lot of effort into, I mean, this week, the amount of commitment that's been given to this consultation. Um, we need more resources. We need more people to help in different task groups as we go forward. So we're looking for, if there's anything that captures your interest that you feel you can make a meaningful contribution to, then please put your hands up, let us know, and we can start to discuss where the Skills Connect is and move forward with that. Um, the energy level required to go forward with these projects is very significant, but if you're passionate about it and you believe in it, you'll find that energy. And that's what we're looking for as, as in the way forward. Um, teamwork, long-term management, and a forward strategy. I want to come on to built heritage because this is, this is an area where there is definitely um, strong views on either side about what should happen with this. Um, the phone box we'll start with. Um, it's a small project. It's been talked about a lot. There's been various people get involved in it. We're not quite there yet. And yesterday we had some wacky ideas, didn't we? Uh, about what could be happening in that phone box. I'll leave that to your imagination for the moment. <laughs> uh, but the key thing is, where is it going to go? How are we going to use it? Um, that in itself might look simple project, but actually it's quite complicated to do. Um, this is what I know is the potting shed, but I know Alana is going to tell me it's something else. 
the point is, it's a bit of history at the back of the abbey, which, if there are going to be walks, it's a small structure that could be renovated and could be used in some way linked to heritage interpretation and so on. So again, it's, have you got any ideas? What do you think? At the moment, that is owned by the Clan Trust. This is the laundry building, which is, again, I'm getting the nod, it's something else. I know it as a laundry building. It's described in many places as a laundry building, but it obviously was many things. I think you're talking about a gin production center and things like that. So we could have the Japanese not we gin center here. I'm, I'm joking a bit. But the key, the key thing is that this structure is not so far gone that it couldn't be renovated and contribute to something. At the moment, the trust's constitution relates to heritage and environment. And so that's why we're saying is it potential. Now, we're not putting it forward as an association project, but the critical thing is here, what we're trying to do is paint a vision. What could be happening in the village? Who could be doing what? And how do we present that? Because working together, we can make more of a case for grant aid and other things to get projects going because people can see that you're working in partnership and you're not pulling against each other and we're actually enhancing the assets we've got. So again, it's just a thought. We'd like your views about it and whether you think it's a longer term priority or not. And I would say the same about the big house as well. But what we know is that it's in very poor condition and it would be a phenomenally expensive project to renovate and it would have to be some rich philanthropist like the one that turned up in Jura um, and set up the house in the golf facility there. So it would have to be somebody like that that could take on a project like this. But there are such people and the question is, if they were to be found, would you want to work with them or would you want them to make it a gated area and keep you out of it? It's how that relationship develops over time. In my experience, talking and being in partnership is usually the best way of getting community benefits out of other people's investments. So the benefits are very significant over time because linked to all these projects of land and buildings is the opportunity to implement education projects linked to it. We can bring children from the school at an early stage. We can bring people that are leaving school into schools. For example, um, there's a, a Yorkshire philanthropist has just put 29 million into heritage um, skill development, and some of that's going to Historic Scotland. And we've got historic buildings here where we could actually get entrepreneurial skills brought here, which would be lasted and then could be used in a guile for all sorts of other projects. So there's ways, if we're clever, where we can link in all sorts of benefits for this and future generations but by doing it in partnership with these land and building projects. Increased visitor numbers, some of you won't want an increase in visitors, but if, the, if new facilities, if you're after longer term, quite swanky facilities for a, as a legacy project, you're going to need to bring income in, and that income is not all going to come from the village itself. You're going to have to attract visitors. So the question is, What's the objective of that and how do you provide the facilities to enable that to happen? Also, there's the opportunity for local contractors. Now, at the moment, we're all sort of, can we get any local contractors? So maybe what we need to do is skill more young people up to set up those businesses. Um, but certainly, there's lots of um, entrepreneurial spirit in our guile. We can tap into those people and hopefully get them excited about what you're trying to do as well and to work with us um, on the project. All of this would bring more younger people to the village because there would be something for them to come for and, of course, a lot more. So this is not this community, I know that, but my point is that we want to engage the community at every step of the way. So here we're looking for your feedback on the hub concept. The next stage will be for a group of people to do more work, go and visit some places, come up with some sketch options. Then there would be another exhibition to look at different options at a very early stage so that you can influence those before we move forward to the next. And it goes step by step. But we can only do it when we've made progress. We can't be doing it every month 
or so because it takes a while for these things to come to fruition. But at each key step in the way, there would be a consultation until we got to the point of actually letting a contract and being in a build situation. So my plea is, give us the feedback, let's make a difference. It's not going to be easy, but gosh, won't you be proud of it when you've finished it? Thank you. <laughs>